Part 2 of Human Reproduction The last video left off at fertilization. Fertilization is when the male gamete, so the sperm, fuses with the female gamete, the egg, to form that diploid zygote. This can take place within the time frame of days 12 to day 16 of the menstrual cycle. The reason why there's such a long time frame is because the male gamete, the sperm cell, can live for up to 7 days and the egg cell can live for up to 48 hours. This diploid zygote is now going to undergo mitosis many times. A ball of cells is produced by this mitosis and it is pushed along towards the uterus by contractions of the fallopian tube walls basically and villi pushing it along or wafting it along. By the time the ball of cells reaches the uterus it's approximately 16 cells but then it keeps dividing to form this ball of many cells known as a morula. Eventually the morula becomes this structure known as the blastocyst, a hollow bowl-like structure with this inner mass of cells. So this is the blastocyst and on the right is the inner cell mass and this is what eventually becomes the baby. And on the left is the trophoblast and that is involved in forming the placenta. Approximately seven days after fertilization we have implantation. This is when the blastocyst here on the right burrows into the lining of the womb, the endometrium. At this stage, the lady is said to be pregnant. So the blastocyst has this inner cell mass, so this clump of cells that is eventually going to give rise to the baby. So how exactly does this happen? So the inner cell mass of the blastocyst will form these germ layers and these are basic layers of cells in the blastocyst from which all adult organs and tissues will form. You have to know each of the germ layers and we always start from the inside out. Endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. So just remember, endo, meso, ecto. Endoderm. This will give rise to the lining of the digestive, respiratory and excretory systems and it will also form the liver and the pancreas. The mesoderm will give rise to the blood vessels, the kidneys, the reproductive organs, the heart, muscle and the skeleton. And finally, the ectoderm will give rise to the nervous system and the skin. So within the blastocyst, membranes begin to form. The most notable of which is the amnion. The amnion will contain amniotic fluid. And this will act as a shock absorber to protect the baby. The outer layer of the blastocyst, known as the trophoblast, it develops these finger-like projections known as chorionic villi, which will sort of burrow their way into the endometrium. This forms the placenta. And it's for this reason that we say the placenta is formed from both embryonic and uterine tissue. The umbilical cord links the embryo with the placenta. So what are the functions of the placenta, which will be fully functional by the third month of pregnancy? It keeps the blood supply of the mother and the baby separate, very important in case there was a compatibility issue. If the mother had rhesus negative blood, and the baby is rhesus positive, well if somehow the rhesus positive baby's blood mixes with the rhesus negative's mother's blood, well the mother will then form antibodies. Forming antibodies in this way is basically the mother's immune system attacking the blood of the baby, so it's not a good scenario. Another reason for keeping the blood supply of the mother and the fetus separate is to ensure that the mother's high blood pressure does not damage the fetus. A lot of essential materials are passed from the mother to the fetus via the placenta, materials such as antibodies. Gas exchange is another important role of the placenta. The mother will supply oxygen to the fetus through the placenta. The fetus is going to do a lot of growing and for this it needs nutrients and the nutrients are going to be supplied from the mother through the placenta. The fetus generates a lot of waste, so it's going to produce a lot of CO2 and urea among other things and the mother is going to get rid of this waste. It will be passed to the mother through the placenta. The placenta also has an endocrine function. It produces hormones such as progesterone and oestrogen. On now to embryo development and you have to be able to give an account of everything that's formed up to week 12. By week 3 the nervous system has formed. By week four, the heart is beating. By week five, limbs begin to develop. By week six, eyes, ears and mouth are visible. By week eight, all the organs have now formed and the embryo is no longer an embryo, it is now a fetus. By week 12, the bones are now almost fully formed. The cartilage has been replaced by hard bone, so ossification is complete. There are now coordinated movements and the sex organs can be determined with a scan. 
Pregnancy lasts 38 weeks dated from fertilization. There are three stages involved in giving birth. Stage one is the longest. The placenta stops producing progesterone, therefore progesterone levels drop. Oxytocin secreted by the pituitary gland stimulates the walls of the uterus to contract. And oxytocin is also responsible for intensifying those uterine contractions. Intense contractions cause the amnion to burst and the amniotic fluid leaks out. By the end of this stage, the cervix should have dilated to 10 centimeters. Stage two, the baby passes out through the vagina and is delivered. Immediately after birth, the umbilical cord is clamped and then cut. The final stage is when the placenta is delivered. Baby's born and now it's on to lactation, which is the secretion of milk and milk is secreted from mammary glands. The mother will produce or secrete this substance known as colostrum until her milk is ready. Lactation or the production of milk depends on the secretion of this hormone known as prolactin and prolactin is produced by the pituitary gland. During the pregnancy, progesterone inhibited prolactin. Prolactin stimulates milk production. As long as a baby suckles, the secretion of prolactin will continue and therefore milk production will continue. It's recommended that a baby should be breastfed for at least the first six months of its life. Why is this? They say breast is best because it is nutritionally balanced and so it's the best diet for the baby. It also is a source of antibodies coming from mam to help the baby fight any infection and it's at the right temperature which is always a bonus. Final topic is contraception. So how to prevent all of this? How to prevent pregnancy? The first one is to prevent fertilization. So a barrier method, condoms. Chemical means, so the pill to prevent ovulation. Implants such as interuterine devices, such as the coil that prevents implantation from taking place. Surgical means, such as vasectomy where the vas deferens are cut in a male. Surgery in the female, such as tubule ligation where the fallopian tubes are clipped. Yay, we have reached the end of human reproduction. About time, I know you're all saying that, I am too. The only way to study this and any other topic is to use your book and to do lots of questions. Good luck.